Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running. And I'm Katie. And this video is a very exciting one as we're gonna be taking a first look and giving you our first run impressions of the all new Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. For those that don't know, what's so exciting about um, this new shoe from Nike? Yeah, so the original Pegasus Turbo, if we back it up a little bit, was probably one of the most popular running shoes of all time. It released in about 20, 2018, um, and it featured Zumex foam in the midsole, which was previously only featured on shoes like the Vaporfly. And uh, it was lightweight, it was versatile, it was a pretty competitive price point, and you could use it for almost anything. Its versatility was, was unrivaled. For some reason, which I still don't know, Nike discontinued the shoe after only two iterations, which had runners, myself included, scratching their heads and uh, scouring eBay trying to find old stock. Um, so the revival of the shoe in the, the nature variation that we've got here is definitely a big deal for many runners out there. Yeah, so you've spoken a lot about um, the original Peg Turbo, but of course this one has got some pretty cool sustainability merits. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So start off with the upper, makes sense to start there. Um, we've got Take Back Yarn Fly Knit here, which is a closed loop process, which essentially means it's 100% recycled um, and it uses Take Back Yarn kind of recycled fly knit and it mixes it with plastic bottle chips. Um, so a nice touch there. And I think a lot of people get on really well with fly knit. It tends to fit quite closely to the foot and you can feel by, you know, just by holding it in the hand, it's got a nice amount of structure to it, especially in the midfoot area where you've got these kind of this blue detailing here, which almost acts as like a cage to wrap around the foot and just provide really great lockdown. Mm. Yeah, that's actually one element that I'm quite interested to, to see about the, the fly knit material because I've not had um, a shoe from Nike with fly knit before. So very interesting, but as talking about other Nike shoes, um, I have the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, like many others have tried as well. And I can see a lot of similarities between the foam um, here and the Peg Turbo. So what's going on in that area of the shoe? Yes, so just like the original Pegasus Turbo, we do have Zumex in the midsole here. It's not a full length Zumex midsole. Um, as you might have seen on shoes like the, uh, the Nike Zagama, the recently released trail shoe, uh, and indeed the Zoom Fly 5. We've got Zumex combined with a carrier foam. So where it kind of changes here, where you've got a bit of segmentation, um, this little bit of foam at the back is called SR02. It's essentially a slightly denser, more durable, more robust foam. Um, and because Zumex is so soft and bouncy, that just helps add a little bit more structure and stability to the shoe. Um, but the most important thing to mention is the Zumex in the Turbo Next Nature, similar to what we saw on the Alpha Fly Next Nature, which released last year. Um, it is made from recycled Zumex, so all scrap Zumex, which is in here, um, which again is a nice touch and just adds to that sustainability merit. Mm. And then, okay, so when we get to the base of the shoe, got quite a bit of rubber going on here. Yeah, so one of the, the nicest things about the, the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature is the amount of rubber coverage that you get. It's designed to be that lightweight trainer that you can do most types of running in. Um, so to have a solid amount of coverage just means that you're going to get a solid amount of mileage out of it. I'd expect, you know, I know people who've got well over a thousand miles out of the original yeah. Pegasus Turbo. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going that high yeah, that's in, a lot in a of shoe, miles. it's a lot of miles. <laughs> but yeah, four to six hundred miles you should easily get out of a shoe of this nature. Um, and that, that coverage, you can tell that you've actually got a decent amount of depth on some of those lugs there too. So, you know, it's predominantly a road shoe, but if you took it on canal paths, mm. uh, flat pack trails, stuff like that, you're probably not gonna have any issues with things like grip and durability there either. So, had a bit of a chat about broadly speaking around the shoe. So let's go into some of those key stats that I know so many people are interested in, uh, which you know all too well. So let's get into it. Yes, so if we start off with the weight, which generally speaking seems to be towards the top of people's priority list these days when it comes to picking a lightweight, versatile daily trainer. The weight on the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature is not bad at all. In a women's US 8, you're looking at about 220 grams. In a men's US 10, these are just the sample sizes that, that Nike give us, you're looking at about 270 grams. So not the absolute lightest shoe on the market, but you can feel for yourself in hand, it, mm. it feels pretty lightweight um, and it's fairly competitive with other shoes in this kind of category. So we've spoken about the, this Zumex foam, um, but in terms of kind of like stack height, heel drop, what are we looking at for this? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a 10 millimeter drop with the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature and the stack height is not as high as you might see on some of the most recent releases from, from other brands. We've got 32 millimeters in the heel and 22 millimeters in the forefoot in the men's version. The women's version is slightly different. It's identical in terms of the, the launch colorway, uh, but we do actually have 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel for the women's version and 20 millimeters in the forefoot. Similar to uh, with the Pegasus lineup, the Air Zoom pods that you have in the, um, or the Air Zoom bags rather, that you have in the forefoot, are catered slightly differently for the men's and females versions. So ah. the PSI or the pressure uh, is slightly different from the men's version to the women's version. Essentially, very generally speaking, uh, a, a female shoe, a, a female frame might require less to compress that foam or ah. need slightly less cushioning underfoot than a larger male, <laughs> very broadly speaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have a Tom, because I did not know that. <laughs> The only other thing to say is, obviously you've got yours on right now, but you have literally just slipped them on. I have not even tried on the shoe yet, which I'm very excited to do. So we'll get you all of our thoughts on fit, uh, whether it's true to size, the lockdown and that kind of thing, once we've actually run in the shoe in a little while. But before we do that, I guess it's important to mention that the shoe is made from at least 50% recycled materials by weight, which is a really nice touch. And I don't know about you, Katie, but personally I'd love to see more shoes going in that more yeah. sustainable direction. here in Finsbury Park in London on a really really sunny day and Tom and I are going to get ready now to go for our first test run in the shoes. We're going to be taking it nice and steady because I myself coming away from a bit of an injury at the moment so just looking forward to taking it nice and steady. Yeah and I'm in the middle of marathon training I'm about eight weeks in with eight weeks to go until London so my legs are starting to bark at me a little bit. I've got a hard session tomorrow so what do you reckon Katie? We'll go for a five miler nice and easy four fifties five yeah. minute k something like that. As long enjoy as we the sunshine. A, yeah, as long as we have a conversation enjoy the sun that's good with me. Yeah and I will throw in some strides at the end as well to get ready for a session tomorrow so that will be a nice little test of the shoes as well at a faster pace. Um, so with that out of the way, should we, uh, should we get cracking? Let's go. Can I have my shoe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, let's go. We've just finished our five mile run. It was nice and steady. It's pretty hot outside, but straight to the point, how were the shoes? Yeah, so I really enjoyed them. I think the, the main question in my head is when you take a shoe, which was a classic a few years ago, has it managed to keep up with modern standards, right? We're, we're used to seeing yeah. big stack kites. We're used to seeing significant like rocker shaped geometry in shoes, plates in shoes are a standard now. So is a shoe like this still up to scratch in 2022 and I think it is you know like I, I really enjoyed it like you say we didn't push the pace we kept it fairly mm. easy at what 440 to 450-ish yeah. per kilometre um, which is fairly comfortable pace for, for both of us and they felt great all the way through yeah. you know um, how did you find them in terms of like fit were they true to size did you have any issues with lockdown or lacing or anything like that yeah so no similar to you actually just felt felt comfortable feel snug um, the thing about sizing actually um, all Nikes, usually true to size, actually. Mm. But with these, I think I could probably go half a size down, actually. Still comfortable, but a little bit more roomy than normal. So that's probably the only thing I would do differently in these particular shoes, is go down a half size. Yeah, I'd, I'd be inclined to agree with you, to be honest. I can, I'll normally wear a UK 8 in a Vaporfly, just because I like my race shoes to be a bit more snug, and 8.5 across the board in, in everything else. These are an 8.5, and they fit great. I've still got a nice amount of support around the, the midfoot, which again, I think, when we were talking about the flying it up uh, originally when we were sat down you were not concerned but asking questions about yeah. how structured it would be um i don't know if it's the same for you but i found them to be like really quite nice and supportive around that that whole midfoot area yeah um but i could probably get away with half a size down to be fair yeah and we were talking as we went round really what where we would fit the shoe into our training and what mm. kind of sessions it would suit 
Um, I think we both definitely had similar opinions in the sense that we'd reach for these for those easier runs. And even on those occasions where you're adding a couple of like bursts at the end of your sessions, like you did some strides yeah, today, yeah. actually, how did that go in those? Yeah, so, so I've got uh, a fairly hefty marathon session tomorrow. I've got 12 by a K off quite short recovery. Um, so did some strides at the end of our easy run just to loosen the legs off a little bit. And I, again, I, I really enjoyed them for it. I think it's a shoe that is versatile. Like when we were just jogging at recovery pace, they felt they felt fine. They felt mm. like you've got a nice amount of cushioning underfoot. There was no, I wasn't massively aware of the ground underfoot, which yeah. is always a good thing, right, with a shoe like this. Um, but doing the strides, you know, they, they felt snappy, they felt responsive, they felt light on foot. Uh, lockdown was great, which is the main thing you really need in a shoe like that. You can't have your heels slipping out when you're trying to run fast. So although I wouldn't race in them and I wouldn't do sessions in them specifically, I do a lot of runs where you start off easy and finish, you know, a little bit quicker, finish at sort of marathon pace, that kind of effort. And I think for that, it's, it's a perfect shoe. So anywhere up to that kind of 10 mile mark with some steady running thrown in the mix, I think they're a, they're a really solid option comparable against anything else that I've tried recently, yeah. to be honest. So I think really in short, we're of very similar opinions. We've reached for them for the, for the daily kind of mileage, the easier running, perhaps get some, some tempo sessions in there. Mm. And I think really for me, what sets these apart and why I would reach for these as opposed to another pair of shoes that maybe does, maybe does similarly is that really they're sustainable, you know, mm. and for the kind of values I know you kind of share as well. I think for me, going down that sustainability route, hoping to see more brands doing that kind of thing i think i would reach for these over another pair just purely for that element as well so yeah listen they're not they're not perfect obviously like we're, we're not at the point really where we've got like a 100 yeah. percent carbon neutral sustainable shoe yet but to see a brand as big as nike go down a route where they are really trying to make those leaps forward with their move to zero initiative and one thing that we didn't mention actually when you uh when you get these uh when you buy them and you get them in the box they only come in one box so they'll be wrapped in pro direct packaging and whatnot as well but the, uh, the box that they come in is the box that they're shipped in. So there's no box in a box. There's no excess materials there either, which again, I think is just quite a nice yeah. touch for a shoe like this. And it shows like real intent with it. It's not just sustainable messaging for the sake of it. There's yeah. some real merit to it. So yeah, I agree. All good on that front too. Yeah. So if you liked today's video, drop us a like and any comments. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. And if you are looking to get your hands on a pair of the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature for yourself, you can do so right now at prodirectrunning.com.